Hi there, my name is Anne and you're watching Art on the Creek. Welcome to my home studio in Parker, Colorado. I've got some fun things in store for us today because I started up my Sketchbox monthly art subscription again and this month there's some really cool things in here that I've never tried. So I thought we could go over how you might approach a new art supply that's new to you. Are you ready? Let's go play and see what we can create. First and foremost, I want to mention that I am not sponsored by Sketchbox. This is just something I decided to do with my own money. I like art subscription boxes and um, for me it's a really good way to try some new supplies. So here's their website if you are interested in checking them out. I signed up for the premium box and their base price on that one is $35 a month and that's if you go month to month. You can get the basic box subscription which is $25 a month and you get either fewer supplies or a different grade of supplies when you do that one. I think I signed up for six months, so you do get a discount. Um, it's really a good buy if you're looking to, here's how it comes packaged, by the way, um, really nice. I feel like if you're looking to try new supplies and um, you, you're not sure what to get and you don't know how much of something to get, these are curated in such a way that make it really easy to dip your toes into the water. So they all come with these little cards inside and this first one here is an example of some of the artwork that you can create with the supplies in this box. And this one, this is April 2023's box by the way, uh, by Kara Ann Aldridge and it's got a little bit of information about her and where to find her on Instagram and she's got a website through Linktree. So this is some of the art that you can create with these so we're dealing with some really bright vibrant colors. And then this is a little advertisement that they put in this month with, uh, they, it looks like they partnered with QPixel. And it looks to me like QPixel is a company that has devised an app that will help you uh, trace your artwork so that you have smart trace technology. They teach uh, classes from artists and you can paint from your own photos. So it seems like a pretty cool app. I don't know if I will ever try it, but they have a one month free trial. Uh, because their partnership with Sketchbox. So that's kind of cool and it's just something to, um, you often get these little bonus deals in here so that's always kind of fun to have. Now inside the box, the supplies, you always get this little card too and the thing is Sketchbox is really focused on social media um, so they encourage you to post your work, give it the hashtag Sketchbox April. You probably see a lot of these on Instagram if you're already following Sketchbox. Um, it's pretty cool to see all the different artists. I've uh, actually, I've met a few artists online by doing this, um, you know, not in person, but just talk to them. And it's just so fun to find a new artist community through new supplies. So let's find out what's in the box here. Now this one is a Pantone art pad and all of these are partnered with uh, Royal Talons worked with Pantone to create these products. So you're dealing with four inch by six inch sheets of paper here. The pad is 10 sheets. 82 pound bright white paper. Bright white paper I would highly recommend with these Pantone markers because they're so sheer and vibrant that that bright white really lets the luminescence of the ink show through. And you get a little Princeton round brush size 4. That's always nice to have. And uh, let's see this is a Taclon brush. Um, I have gotten so many brushes through these art kits and I've kept every single one of them. I really like them. I think that they're good to have, nice to add to your collection, and I'm never disappointed in them. This is one thing I'm really excited about. This is the Pantone Marker ink. Now this is a 30 milliliter pigment-based ink that they're using in these markers. And the thing that's so cool about these is that um, they're pigment-based. They're not dye-based. You can use them to refill the markers or you can use the ink straight from a bottle. These can be layered, these can be played with. I've had a lot of fun with this as I'm doing this voiceover and I'm most excited about this ink. Now these retail for $12.95. So remember I paid $35 for this box, a little less than that because I got a six month subscription. But when you add up the price of everything in here, the savings really is great if you're looking to just uh, try something new. And then for these markers, they're going to retail for $8.50 a piece. And you got a good selection here. You have a good basic color selection. They've given you a yellow, a pink, a blue, and then kind of a lavender. So these are really bright, really, really vibrant colors. 
and I'm very excited to use these a little bit more in my art. I, I feel like as I'm doing this voiceover and I've already created some art with them, I feel like I've just barely discovered the capabilities of these. But one thing I can tell you about this paper is there is no bleed through and I'm really excited about that. Opening one of these markers up is really kind of easy. You've got a chisel cap, which brings you to the chisel end, and that's a really nice tip. It looks like it's very sturdy. It's beveled on each of the edges except for the short, uh, the short edge below the slant, if that makes sense. So it's got a lot of different uh, capabilities, different widths of lines. You can get a lot of different uh, styles of drawing with that. And I love that the chisel is on the chisel cap, and then over here you've got the brush tip. However, that's going to take me a while to remember because I just, uh, <laughs> I pull off the wrong end of the cap uh, most of the time that I'm using these. So, you know, there's that. But um, that's just user challenges. One of these days I'll figure out my life. I don't know. <laughs> you always get a cute little sticker. They're vinyl. And this is another thing that I'm really excited about. I, you can tell I just kind of glazed over the sticker. I don't really get into those too much, but I do save them on a sketchbook. But a lot of artists, young, younger, I think, like to put them on water bottles and computers and things. That's just not my jam. But uh, if you like that, you'll be getting a sticker in these sets. This is a Faber-Castell Grip 2001 2.5 two uh, HB pencil. I have been using this for a while now, and I haven't yet had to sharpen it. It came sharpened, and um, I'm really psyched about this pencil. The eraser, you know, it's it's a little bit harder than I like, but that's okay. I think that uh, I will probably use it when I'm not thinking about using my other erasers, and I won't have any problem with it. So here's what you get, and I paid $35 for all of those things. If you were to buy them individually, you would be looking at a grand total of $63.14. So there is some savings involved in this, and I don't know, I think that's pretty cool for trying new supplies. But so there's my spiel for uh, art subscription boxes. There's a million of them out there. If you're not interested in this one, um, I've seen them for quilting, I've seen them for crafting, for kids. Um, I've also seen them for uh, knitting, for crochet, so you know, you can just look around uh, art subscription boxes, just give it a Google and see if it's something you're interested in. Who knows? You might find something you didn't know you liked. Okay, we're going to speed through this part here. I'm just playing with it. I'm just kind of testing to see what you can do. So you can see in some instances I've mixed it with water, I've done some layering, I've kind of got a color chart out, and mixing it with water kind of encouraged me to figure out what would happen if I used all of these as a water media. Um, they go on really sheer. That is something that was not, I didn't like it as much, but I love playing with that ink. Uh, I felt like I couldn't get as vibrant of blends by doing it this way, but you could certainly do it. And um, had to keep reloading my palette, which is not an issue. It's just something that uh, kind of had to keep stopping and starting. For me, the most fun thing by far was the ability that these have to be permanent after they're dry. I just feel like that opens a whole bunch of new doors. For instance, you could use these as a base underneath watercolor and it won't lift up. So that's really kind of cool. If you are a multimedia artist, these would be so fun to add to your art supplies. I love how the bottled ink works. I had so much fun playing with that. It was hard for me to go back to the markers actually because I really love playing with bottled inks. I like painting with inks anyway and that was really fun for me. You can see the blends here. Um, they're just really sheer and you don't get a lot of impact out of them but then again that's because I've watered them down. If uh, you remember back when I was layering the markers straight from uh, from the marker, layering marker on marker that is, you get really vibrant blends. And it really looks like, um, gosh, do you remember on stage lighting where you had the cellophane that you put over the light to change colors? That's what these remind me of. The color is so pure and so crisp, and I'm not surprised because they're by Pentone. So that really gives you a lot of leeway there as well. So I'm just really having a lot of fun uh, playing with this here. And just kind of a little bit frustrated about the stopping and starting, having to go back and uh, give myself more to play with. So this particular method, I wouldn't really recommend unless you're working on something really small and detailed, uh, because you could certainly do it. I felt like the spaces that I was painting in here were even just a little too large for the amount of ink that I was able to pick up from the marker. Um, again, really excited that this is pigment ink and not dye based. I couldn't find any information on Lightfast here. 
So hopefully when they come out, they'll have a full color chart with light pass information, but I couldn't find any right here. So I'm just layering that over the markers just to see what we can do. And then look at how cool this ink spreads out. You can do wet on wet techniques. And I was so excited to, um, to try some more. I thought, okay, well, I think what I'm going to do is get into my salt and put some salt on there and we'll see what can happen with that. And now I'm going to dry this portion down here, make sure it's really, really dry because what I want to do is test that claim that they are waterproof after they are dry. And you know what? They are. I was so surprised. I tried a couple methods of lifting up and you can't. So that's a characteristic to remember as well. You really cannot lift with these. Once they're dry, they're on there for good. But look at that ink. Look how beautiful that is. I want to zoom in here so you can see a little bit how that looks. I like the slight sheen to it. I love how the salt worked on it and I dropped some water in there and that worked too. So you really got a lot of versatility with these. So let's dive in. Let's get some of this versatility tested. And I think I'm going to call on Reed Richards to model for me. No promises, you guys. I, I, this is a first for me. I'm very new to drawing uh, Marvel characters. So be kind in your comments. <laughs> But we all got to try something new, right? We all have to figure out uh, what's best for us and uh, what we enjoy doing because that's what art is all about. It's about exploration, freedom, and uh, figuring out new techniques and new things and just seeing what you can create. So I'm just kind of getting the basic lines of his face drawn here. I'm loving this pencil. I'm going to definitely look for more of these pencils. And I will tell you right away, eyes and lips are hard. Oh my gosh, I overthought these way too much. But I think... I was nervous about the new supplies because I really kind of botched the drawing here, but that's okay. We'll just go ahead and continue. So I'm just putting the, <laughs> the sketch down. I could have drawn anything for this. I don't know why I decided to draw something that I'm completely unfamiliar with, but uh, you know, why not, right? We all have to, to be newbies at something at some point in our lives. And um, portraiture is not something I'm highly skilled in. And of course, comic book uh, adds a different perspective to that altogether. But what I wanted to do after I had the chance to play with these with layering is just to see how these would work if you were kind of attempting some sort of animated looking thing. Uh, because the sample that was given is kind of anime. So I wanted to see how she got her shading in and uh, try and figure out what my interpretation of that would be with this art. So I'm really just kind of pushing the envelope here and just changing things up. I'm just using all of the colors that I can think of. I tried to use all of them in here. Right now I'm going with the blue. First thing I did was I layered down the yellow and then I used the purple for uh, some of the shading because that did develop a nice brown. And then I went in with the pink for the ears. And now I'm using the a combination of the palette and going in with that teal ink to kind of add some dark shadows in here to get some dimension going on his on his face and working in his eyes here and you can see on his left eye the one on our right uh, my wrist popped when I was doing the shading under his eye so I kind of uh, changed the shape of his eye entirely but I decided at this point you know what this is just an experiment this isn't going anywhere I'm just showing you what it's like to play with <laughs> to play with these materials so this isn't going to be hanging up anywhere it's just for fun just completely for fun so I decided to just continue on with it and I was so happy that there was no bleed through I know I've mentioned that before but gosh when you're working with markers that's so frustrating when you have bleed through and you ruin the other side of the page or you uh, leak something onto some artwork that's underneath there so you didn't even have to remember to put down any kind of protective sheet in between now the pen that I am using for the black lines is uh, it is a zebra ink pen and it has a medium tip on one end and a fine on the other, I think. But I really like it because it's kind of two pens in one. In fact, it very much is two pens in one and it's really all you need. Uh, it would be nice to have one just a little bit finer than this for some more detail. But um, at the end, I'll show you the other characters I drew because once I played with this, the, I, I'm not going to lie, this first one was a little bit like the first time you drive a stick. Uh, it was it was like, wow, what do I have in my hands and uh, how do I control this thing? So I just had a lot of fun and I'm really bearing my soul here for you guys because, you know, for all intents and purposes, this is not quality artwork. <laughs> I just want to show you how it's 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 OK to play. It's OK to do something you haven't done before or to be unfamiliar with it. 
Um, it's okay to bare your soul on the internet a little bit. And um, that's what I'm doing here for you. We'll get to the end here and I will show you the other ones I did because I really like how uh, Thing came out. I thought he came out really, really nicely. Um, I'm going in too here with some uh, bleed proof ink because I lost some of the highlights and I wanted to go ahead and put those back in. So let's see what it looks like when we're all done. Well, guys, let's be honest. I mean, Marvel's not going to be knocking down my door anytime soon, but um, this was a first for me. And at least uh, Reed Richards is still speaking to me, I think. He still has a home on my desk anyway. So let's take a look and see what the other characters came out like. So here we go. Here's my rendition of the Fantastic Four. I know it's kind of a mediocre four, but that's okay. Two out of two aren't bad. I really like the way <laughs> Thing came out. And I really like Human Torch. But uh, the Invisible Woman... And Mr. Fantastic, you know, they're okay. It's all experiments. I appreciate you hanging out with me. We'll see you next time. Have a great week. Bye now.